Hey everybody, coming to you again from DAPRA's Midwest Tech Center. Today's short instructional video comes at the request of Scott Clark, our Indiana Applications Manager. He asked if we could demonstrate the roughing and finishing routine for making a chase pocket for a mold insert. So we've got a piece of 4140, six by eight by four inches tall, that will allow us to make a smaller pocket five by seven inches by three and a half inches deep. We'll rough, semi-finish, and finish this part and show you each tool and program process along the way. So let's get to work. All right, so here's our block of steel. We have a piece of 4140 pre-hard, around 28 to 32 Rockwell. We've got about a six inch width by eight inch length, and the block is four inches thick. The chase pocket that we will machine is five inches wide from here to here and seven inches long. Each corner has a three quarter inch corner radius in it. Uh, the machine that we're going to use for milling today is a Haas VM2, so it's a 40 taper machine. So given the size of our pocket, again, five by seven, and the fact that we're on a 40 taper machine and we've got three quarter inch uh, corner radii, I'm going to use a two inch diameter uh, high feed shell mill to execute a high feed ramp routine in this pocket. Now obviously a two inch cutter isn't going to bring a five inch wide pocket to size in one revolution of the pocket if I use a high feed ramp routine. So all I've done is taken my finished pocket size, offset it inward by one inch, and created an inner pocket that I can ramp first. So we'll actually ramp this inner pocket, which is about three by five uh, in dimensions. We'll ramp that down to the full three and a half inch depth. Then we'll move out and ramp the final pocket size to its three and a half inch depth. The tool that we're going to use is a two inch diameter high feed shell mill. I have it programmed for 700 surface feet which is 1330 RPM, a feed per tooth of 40 thousandths, which is a bit conservative for high feed, but because we are in a constant ramp, the chip will naturally have a little more mass. So, and we really need to be able to evacuate chips. So uh, we don't want the chip to be so heavy that the machine air pressure struggles to evacuate the chips. So that gives us a feed rate of 267 inches per minute. The cut parameters, we again, for high feed ramping, we actually program a contour, but then we turn on ramping. And rather than programming an angle, I've programmed a depth of 35. So every time the tool uh, traverses around the pocket, the Z depth will have increased by 35 thousandths. We are leaving from our rough 15 thousandths stock on the walls, and we're leaving 5 thousandths stock on the floor. Uh, and again, as far as the total depth, we're taking the pocket to three and a half inches in depth when everything's all said and done. So that's a look at our parameters. Let's pull up a graphic verification screen and show you the tool path. So here is our inside pocket being machined first. And we'll let that go ahead and speed up to race to the bottom. And in that pocket, we're actually stuffing the corners, but it gives us all linear moves so that the feed rate stays high. So now the, the tool has moved to the outside, and we're not conventional milling as it looked for a moment there. That's just the speed of the verification. It is climb milling around that pocket down to the full depth. And when we reach the bottom of the pocket, Again, we'll have left 15,000 stock on the walls, 5,000 stock on the floor, and the total cycle time is basically nine minutes. Now that's Mastercam's verification estimate. Uh, we will, when we run the part on the machine, we'll note the actual cycle time there.
So moving on to operation number two, we are going to use a three quarter inch diameter backdraft style indexable tool to take the walls of this pocket from 15 thousandths stock down to 7 thousandths stock. We're also going to take our corner radii from a one inch radius left by the two inch diameter roughing tool down to a three quarter radius uh, for our finishing pass. So when this three quarter inch backdraft tool is done, the walls and the corners will have seven thousandths material remaining for the finish cut. Looking at the parameters for this, we're running, like I said, a three quarter inch tool. It has a sixteenth corner radius. Uh, we're programming a surface footage of about 687. It gives us a spindle speed of 3500 RPM. Our feed rate, or our feed per tooth, is 10 thousandths. We have a two fluted backdraft indexable tool, so that brings us to 70 inches a minute for the feed. As far as our cut parameters, again, we're profile ramping. So once the tool engages the material, it'll go into a constant ramp until it reaches the bottom and finishes the cut. There are no entry or exit moves. Again, we've given it a depth. In this case, uh, because we're taking more stock out of the corners, uh, going from a one inch radius to a three quarter radius, uh, we're just putting a ramp depth in of 40 thousandths. Like I said before, we're leaving 7,000 stock on the walls and we're still leaving that 5,000 stock on the floor. We'll come back and finish that with the finishing tool. And again, our total depth is three and a half inches. So let's look at a graphic verification then for the semi-finishing tool, our three-quarter inch backdraft. We'll hit go and you'll notice that there's a light cut on the, the straight walls, but our corners, there's a little more of a shelf there. So you can just see the extra stock being removed in each corner by our semi-finishing tool going from the one inch radius of the rougher down to uh, the three quarter radius that we've actually programmed for the pocket corners. So we'll let that take its way to the rest of the bot. Now, again, this is going to stop just 5,000 short of the floor so that we can come back and finish the floor in a separate operation. And there we've reached the bottom. All right, so let's move on to our finishing operation. We'll use the same 
three quarter inch backdraft tool that we used for the semi finish. But at this point, we have an even seven thousandths of material on our walls and our corners. Uh, so we're ready to attack this uh, with our finishing tool a little more aggressively since we have such a light cut and it's even material all the way around. So again, the tool is a three quarter backdraft, one sixteenth corner radius. Now, however, we're speeding up to a surface footage of 981, which gives us 5,000 RPM. Our feed per tooth can also be more aggressive because of the very light width of cut we're taking. Uh, we're experiencing radial chip thinning, which basically means the width of cut is such a small percentage of the tool diameter that our actual chip thickness is much less than our program feed per tooth. Uh, so we can get aggressive to that extent to where we're feeding at 200 inches a minute around this profile. Looking at our parameters, we are again pro, uh, programming a contour ramp so that we engage the material from the top and, and enter into a constant ramp until we reach the bottom. Our depth here is 25 thousandths per pass so that we get a very nice uh, surface finish on the walls and more importantly so that we get straight walls uh, from top to bottom. So here as a finished pass, we're leaving zero stock on the walls. However, we are still leaving five thousandths of material on the floor so that we can go back and finish that in an individual operation. And then again, our total depth for the pocket is three and a half inches. All right, so let's look at the graphic verification for our finishing tool. Uh, we have roughed the pocket to within 15. We've finished, semi-finished within seven. Now we will take the walls and the corners uh, to finish size. So let's let that run and it'll look very much like our semi-finishing routine. Here however we are running a faster speed and feed uh, because we have a very light cut on all of our surfaces being machined right now. It's only removing seven thousandths of material. Uh, our ramp down is about 25 thousandths so we've got a fine finish. We'll go ahead and let this speed up. You can see we're just staying in a constant ramp. The tool is constantly engaged in the material. It never leaves it. So that'll help both in terms of cycle time and in regards to the surface finish that we have when we're done. And this tool again is being left short of the bottom by five thousandths. We'll come back in a finished floor cut to, to take care of that floor surface. All right, so now our walls are done. We'll move on to the floor. So finally, we'll look at the graphic verification for finishing the pocket floor. We're sticking with the same three-quarter inch backdraft tool that we used for our sidewalls, uh, which will help us uh, achieve a very nice blend uh, at the intersection of the floor and the wall because we're not changing the cutter uh, and risking any height variation between the two. Our parameters for finishing the floor, again, three-quarter inch tool, sixteenth corner radius. Now we're going to be engaging 
probably 50, 60 percent of the tool diameter as we step over to machine the floor. So we're backing the surface footage off to a more reasonable number of 625. It gives us around 3200 RPM. Uh, my feed per tooth I've lowered to 5 thousandths so that we get a nicer finish. So our feed rate is only 32 inches a minute, but again, we're in and out pretty quick here because we're just skimming the floor. Our uh, parameters, we're leaving two thousandths on the walls. So we're taking the floor to size and staying just shy of our walls and our corners so that we don't mar uh, the very nice surface finish that we've achieved on those surfaces from the previous operations. And then again, our depth of cut will be three and a half inches. So let's look at the graphic verification for our floor machining. We'll slow this down because we don't need a lot of speed for this. The tool heads straight to the bottom and you can see it's starting in the center and working its way out. And it's staying short of the sides by just a couple of thousands. So uh, there will be an indistinguishable uh, mismatch there between the floor and the wall within that corner radius uh, of our tool. Uh, but by doing it this way, we avoid marking the side walls uh, while we're doing the floor finish pass. And similarly, when we were doing our walls, by staying short of the floor, uh, we avoid any additional pressure on that tool that might distort our surface finish. So now we've got our walls, our corners, and our floor to finish size. Checking our wall straightness, we are just under zero, maybe a tenth under at the top. Same at the middle. And right on zero at the bottom. So we're looking at about two tenths total taper in our wall. There you have it. Our chase pocket is complete. After 12 minutes of roughing, 25 minutes semi-finishing, and 18 minutes combined finishing walls and floors, 55 minutes total cycle time, we have a five by seven by three and a half inch deep chase pocket completed. Our walls are straight within less than five tenths and our insert is actually still in pristine condition. It's ready to complete an additional pocket as well. One of the things uh, Scott asked me to mention in the video was that it's a good idea to have a dedicated tool holder and carbide shank cutter body for this type of work. That way, every time you go to finish a pocket like this, your consistency, uh, your size, and your surface finish are known entities. You know what you're going to get. So I thought that was a really good suggestion. For any more information on this application or others from DAPRA, please call us at 800-243-3344 or email us at info at Thank you for watching.